Hi, welcome to Secrets of Irving. Mighty Isis. Meet Steve and Nancy. They're best friends who do everything together, and the more adventurous, the better. They love exploring the outdoors. Hi, what's happening? Come on, Nance, let's go. Go? Go where? Willie Beacon says he spotted an eagle's nest up on Rocky Point. An eagle's nest on Rocky's Point? I refuse to believe it. I know, this isn't eagle territory. But if it's true, I want to get a picture before anybody else does. Okay, but I don't believe it. Rocky Point lives up to its name, especially the Point Park. They're standing on top of it. There, there it is. Hey, I bet it is an eagle's nest. That's it, all right. Looks like there might be some eggs in it. What a picture that's going to make. Did you bring your telephoto lens? Nah, I won't need it. I'll go down there to take the shot. That is a bit dangerous. What kind of dangerous? We took up mountain climbing for just this kind of thing, didn't we? I foresee the need for a rescue by Isis. But not to worry, he's got a rope. Voila! That's French for look what I got. You're not going down on that. I was so afraid I wouldn't use it to tie Christmas presents. It may be frayed, but he's not afraid. Yuck, yuck. Nancy said, how are you doing? And Steve said, I told you, it's just fun! Handy that Andrea came along just then. In the first scene, we established that she was going bird watching. That's what brought her here to the rumored eagle's nest, just in time. What's the flavor of the day? Wind to carry him back up? Rocks form steps so he can climb up? Sister goddess of the wind, return to me the rope that failed. That doesn't rhyme. Maybe it works better in hieroglyphics. Strands of rope which were undone come together now as one. Let's toss it down to him. Isis didn't realize there were two more frayed spots on the rope. When the next one let go, there wasn't a convenient bush to grab onto. Isis put him back together as best she could. The school has a scuba diving club, and of course Steve and Nancy are in it. Mr. Mason is the teacher. Everybody put your gear down and we'll talk a bit over here. He gives us that safety lecture one more time, I swear. Come on, Steve. He's only doing it for any good. I know, I know, but I'm getting tired of the routine. We've heard it a million times. Safety, safety, safety. There's a reason for that. Most of you know I'm an avid scuba diver. I've been at it for over 10 years. And we hammer away at safety because that water wants to kill you. It doesn't want you down there. That's why you can't breathe it. It is not friendly. At the first opportunity, it will end your life. And if you ignore the safety rules, you'll give it the opportunity. Now, there is no margin for error. The first mistake you make could very well be your last. Now, we were lucky today. There were mistakes made, but none of them were fatal. You, Steve, you're number one. Me? Yes, you. You came all the way up from 12 feet without exhaling once. Well, heck, Mr. Mason, it was only 12 feet. Between that 12 feet and the surface, the water pressure around you changes significantly. When the water pressure around you eases, the air in your lungs expands. If you don't exhale and give it somewhere to go, your lungs can literally burst. That's not a good thing, in case you were wondering, Steve. The first cardinal rule of diving is that you never dive without a partner. Okay? You never dive without a partner. Man, he's getting to be a real old lady with these rules. Would you stop that? You've caused more than enough trouble as it is. That's because, again, that water hates you and wants to kill you. Go down there alone and give it a chance, and nobody will ever find your body. The water knows lots of great places to hide it. Andrea and Cindy are in the lab doing some kind of experiment when Rick comes in to talk about Steve. Steve is potentially a very valuable human being. He's studying to be an environmentalist. He's interested in endangered species of all kinds, and he's a very personable young man that... Andrea, Steve is an endangered species, and if he doesn't quit being so careless and impatient, 
he's going to become extinct. For real, the water is trying to get him before he has a chance to reproduce. You're awful close to getting thrown out of the scuba diving club. Well, Mr. Mason didn't say not to tell him. Mr. Mason thinks you're too careless, too impatient, just too dangerous for yourself. Well, Mr. Mason worries too much. That stunt at Rocky Point didn't help any. It was an accident. Sure, but it's the kind of accident that happens only to you. He's still not taking it seriously, and Nancy can't get through to him. Maybe Tut could peck some sense into his head. Okay, everybody check your regulators. Steve, is all of your equipment working properly? Yes, sir, I think so. I don't care what you think. I want you to know that everything is working properly. Now, you go back and recheck every piece of equipment. When you know it's working perfectly, you recheck it again, you understand? Yes, sir. It's about that whole can't breathe water thing again. You want to be absolutely sure you're inhaling the right substance. But Steve has another problem. And Nancy isn't here yet. I'm sorry, Steve. You know the rules. No diving without a partner. You'll just have to wait until she can join us. Have him join one of the other pairs. It is possible to dive as a trio. I've done it many times. <laughs> Buggering your gear is the best way to fix this situation, Steve. It's a little before my diving time, but I'm pretty sure what we're looking at there is called a J-valve. It sectioned off some of the air in the tank to serve as an emergency reserve. If you were toddling along and suddenly had no air, pull that valve and you had enough to get to the surface safely. The thing about the J-valve is just what you saw. The right little bump can open it and you don't know it. You get down there, you run out of air, you pull the handle, nothing happens because it's already open and you used up your reserve. That's what is probably going to happen to Steve when he goes in by himself. Oh, that's not a spoiler. Anybody who's been paying the least little bit of attention knows that's what he's going to do. The next question, where are they? They call this a lake, but it has some curious wildlife for a freshwater lake. Some idiot transplanted a manta ray to this lake, but at least they grabbed a bunch of ocean seaweed to go with it so it doesn't feel too out of place. He's looking for the others, which means he should have looked for their bubbles on the surface before he jumped in, so he at least had some idea which way to go. Nope, nobody under there. Mr. Mason, oh, I'm sorry I'm late. That explains why he can't find him. I guess I missed the dive. I'm afraid you did. Where's Steve? I don't know. Why? Because I told him to wait here for you. You don't think he could have gone down all by himself? It looks that way. Everybody check your tanks. We're going in again. You don't take students on a search and rescue mission, Rick. It's as easy as one, two, three. Step one, look for his bubbles. Spot where he is. Step two, you go there and get him. Step three, you do not endanger the lives of those kids by taking them along. Steve is breaking another rule. The rule is don't go into an overhead environment. An overhead environment is any place where you can't bolt to the surface in an emergency. Take the tank off. Take the tank off. Slip out of those shoulder straps, take the tank off, drop back down, bring the tank with you, get out of there, be alive. Or you can stay there, keep struggling, use up your air even faster, and not be alive. Your choice. Rick sent Nancy to call the lake patrol for help finding Steve. Oh, Miss Thomas, it's Steve. Something may have happened to him. I'm going to get help. Then why are you sitting here talking to me? Go! That's essentially what Andrea says. She finds a place to transform and goes to help. Your timing's perfect. Steve's under the water alone. We can't find him. I know it. Give me your tank. There's not much air left in it. Let's hope we won't need much. He's still blowing bubbles. Look for them. That water is as smooth as glass. They'll be easy to see. Nobody thinks of looking for bubbles. Isa saw in her gem where Steve is, so she jumps in and goes to him. Oh, 
She does what he should have done in the first place, take the bloomin' tank off. But he wasn't thinking. And that is the scuba diver's worst enemy. The thing that kills more divers than anything else is panic. Once you get into that state, unless you have a very alert dive buddy or an Egyptian goddess to pull you out of it, you're dead. The rule is stop, breathe, think, breathe, then act. I've been close to panic underwater one time. It was enough. From then on, I follow that rule religiously, and I'm still alive, without help from ISIS. I don't know what to say, ISIS, except thanks again. Thanks is enough, Rick. I'm just glad I got to him in time. I'll guarantee you one thing. You won't have to do it again. Don't be too hasty with him, Rick. Steve knows he screwed up. He knows he's out of the club. Most important, he knows he deserves it, and he's ready to make some changes in himself. Andrea appears, and they fill her in on what's been happening. Is he all right? Oh, he's fine now. Oh, he's fine. But he won't be fine when I kick him out of the club. Oh, Mr. Mason. Oh, Mr. Mason. Steve is such a nice guy. But this was the worst and final stunt. He looks pretty scared to me. Look, me too. If it hadn't been for ISIS, I'd have Steve on my conscience for the rest of my life. He's adamant. Andrea says, at least have a talk with him. Steve, I have something I want to say to you. Well, I'll bet you do, Mr. Mason. I have something to say to you, too. Oh? Is it okay if I go first before I lose my nerve? Okay, the usual rule is age before beauty, but frankly, Mr. Mason has you beat on both of those. You know all those safety rules you kept pounding at us over and over again? Make sure. Don't take chances. Double check. Well, I used to think you were just being an old lady about it. But I gotta tell you, from now on, compared to me, you're gonna look like some kind of a daredevil. He says, I am Mr. Safety from now on. This is one lesson I'll never forget. Staring death in the face can have that effect on you. Well, I'll tell you what, Steve. As long as it never happens again, I won't kick you out of the club. I will put you on suspension for the rest of the month and probation for the remainder of the year, though. You knew Rick's just an old softy. Besides, Steve still needs to catch that manta ray and return it to the ocean. How's he going to do that if he's out of the club? And again, he is safety personified now. Check, double check, triple check, then check again. When he's scuba diving. Just don't show him any more eagle's nests. I'll see you next time on Secrets of Irving.